Well, we're going to start just a half a minute early here, so that'll be good. All right, now, next Sunday, I'll be gone in the morning service. Uh, pray for me while I'll be preaching the installation service for Sam Lavender over at Cornerstone Baptist Church, and we're looking forward to seeing what the Lord does there in our church plant over in Raleigh. So be in prayer for the Lavenders and, and for Cornerstone. And then I'll be back Sunday afternoon for the evening service and continue our study in 2 John. Uh, next Sunday morning, Joe will be preaching in the morning service, and so be in prayer for him as the Lord leads him to the right sermon text and just to be ready to go next Sunday. Uh, ladies Bible study is going to start up in September, so I want you ladies to be aware of that and be thinking about that. And, and uh, I know that uh, it looks like the way things are going, we should be able to do that. So just be in prayer about uh, joining up ladies to that. All right. I think that's all for the announcements this evening. Uh, our missionaries are here from Chile, the Whites, and looking forward to hearing from them this evening. And so uh, let's sing a song and uh, start the service. Let's turn to hymn number 539. Hymn number 539, it's a chorus. We'll sing it twice through. Let's stand as we sing around the corner, around the world. 539. Point Dexter, would you lose some prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the opportunity to come back to church tonight. Lord, we thank you and praise you for your many blessings. And uh, pray tonight we be with the whites as they present their missionary uh, work there in Chile. And uh, Lord, you would bless their missionary work there, that you would help them prosper and be with them while they're home on furlough and give them safety as they travel to different churches and different places. And we thank you and pray you for them. Amen. Please be seated. Let's turn over to hymn number 542. Hymn number 542. I love to tell the story. 542.
Okay, it's time to do our Bible memory. It's going to be Psalm 25, verses 8 through 10. Psalm 25, 8 through 10. Let's say it together. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment. And the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. And to such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Let's do that one more time. All right? Just really try to absorb what you can from this. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Don't you like that last phrase, right? The person who is uh, being obedient to the Lord in the Old Testament would be keeping the covenant and the Lord's testimonies. He says, you know, the path of the Lord is mercy and truth. What a, what a great testimony this is from the psalmist to us. All right, let's take prayer requests tonight um, that we can remember this week. All right, does anybody have a prayer request you'd like us to remember? Okay, Ellen Jane. And they did some special blood tests. It's not the blood, and it came back that he has a, has a bigger, severe B12 deficiency, which can cause a lot of issues. So, starting Monday, he will take a shot once a week. The following week, he'll take a shot five days for the six weeks, and then he'll take a shot for six months. And he will that, that. Is that all of his problem? Probably not. We're waiting on the other five tests that they did, but that, as he said, is a start. You know, it can okay. Be so, you know, okay. Yes, we will pray for your brother, Johnny. All right. Who else? Is a prayer request tonight? Yes, Stephanie. The kids started virtual schooling last week, and by start, I mean they spend about twenty minutes on their computer. Uh, this week, they actually start with live instruction with their teachers on their computer. So, it was best that the kids would be able to focus and. I would be able to stay out of it unless needed. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, schooling, virtual schooling is going to be difficult for sure. Yep. Yeah. Becky? Um, my sister Sarah is having major surgery on Thursday morning. Uh, so just pray that um, they can do the surgery the easy way instead of the hard way for the stop it versus other mm -hmm. So just pray that they'll recover and be quick. Okay. All right. All right. Who else? Okay, Johnny. Um, I'm going to be applying for a position with the North Carolina Transfer Guard. I'm going to get a transfer to South Carolina and North Carolina. I'm going to try this. Is it the Lord's will? I get it. Close with that door. Okay, good. All right. Uh, Carol. I'm going to pray for my brother. He's home now. Okay. Okay. All right. Continue to pray for Wilson, who, who has some uh, health issues. All right. Who else has a prayer request? Yeah, Jim. Yeah, a couple that I know, David and uh, Aline Murphy. Um, she had been dealing with pancreatic cancer for about two years. Uh, this uh, May, they told her that she was cancer-free. Uh, and then she went to the doctor a couple of weeks ago and they told her the cancer had returned. Uh, unfortunately, her husband has uh, crippling arthritis and he's getting to the point where he can no longer drive. So they have no way to get back and forth to get treatments or anything else. So pray for them, uh, especially figure out how they're going to get treatments and that the Lord will again uh, take away the cancer if he wills. Okay. And it's Eileen? Yes. Okay. All right. Just My later. friend Nell is trying to sell her house in Warrenburg, and we know that's not an easy task. Well, yes. 
we have a new neighbor, and uh, I talked to her dad, who's in town from Ohio, to help with uh, some of the refurb of the house. So just looking for an opportunity to witness. I have no idea what her name is. His name is Tom, um, but I had a nice conversation with him yesterday. And then our other neighbors that have been with us, neighbors for 17 years, we have had conversations with them off and on, but not really about the Lord very much. Uh, just never had openings that was worked well, and just brief conversations. Uh, hi, bye, you know, how are you doing? And, uh, and then all of a sudden, one of them had knee surgery, and it just opened the door to conversations. And so uh, pray that we would be able to um, uh, reach this, these two ladies that live next door to us, uh, that God would open their hearts to the gospel and give us a chance to witness to them. Uh, Becky especially has been really burdened for them. So uh, please pray about that. So just be in prayer for my neighbors, that they'd come to know the Lord. All right, who else has a prayer request tonight? Anybody else? Okay, here's what I'm going to do this evening. Uh, I'm going to ask two or three of the men to pray, and then we'll just pray that way, okay? Johnny Baltz, would you please pray for Ellen Jane's brother, Johnny, for Stephanie's request about the school for the kids starting up, and then Sarah Gothard's surgery. That's Becky's sister, uh, Jim and Diane Matsko's daughter. She's having major surgery this week. And then, and then uh, Ricky, would you please pray for... Um, Johnny Baltz's potential transfer to the North Carolina Guard, and then Carol's brother Wilson, and Eileen Murphy's uh, health situation with his cancer. And then Jacob, would you please pray for Linda's friend Nell, who is selling her house, and then for um, our neighbors, so we'd be able to share the gospel with them. Okay, so, so Johnny, and then Ricky, and then Jacob. Are we good? All right, let's go to prayer. Our Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can gather together as a body of brothers and sisters, Lord, a body of believers, send our petitions to you, and thank you, Lord, that uh, you are God who hears our prayers and answers our prayers. Lord, not always in, in the times that we want, but in your time frame, in your will, and we thank you that uh, you're all powerful. And I pray now for uh, Ellen Jane's brother, Johnny. To get diagnosed or what is healing that boy. I just pray that you would help him to um, get the proper treatment that he needs so that he can get over um, this uh, sickness that he's not feeling well with and that he would uh, just get back to our normal routines of life, Lord. I just pray you to give encouragement and strength. Father, tonight as we approach your throne, pray, Father, that first of all we would seek that your will would be done. 
that you would be exalted in all that we've asked for, and nothing would be from a selfish or an unthankful heart. And Lord, I pray for Johnny as he poses the transfer, that if it's within your will, if it's best, the Lord, that it would be successful. Pray, Father, that he would seek your wisdom and your guidance. The entire family would be supported in that you would get the glory whichever way that it happens. But for Wilson, Carol's brother, and the health issues that he's faced and is still facing, pray that you would intercede in a way that would bring glory to your name. In a way, Lord, that we know that you did the action. And Father, play the same for a baby and I that work I don't know their salvation status, Lord, but there's a physical need there more than just health, Lord. And it's the health that's impacted whether they can get the treatments. So Father, I pray that your will better be done in such a way that the workers would understand that you interceded and you did it for your name's sake. And that you alone, our Lord, would get the glory for you ask in Christ's name. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come to you. We thank you that you are on the throne, all-knowing, all-powerful. Lord, we thank you for the prayer requests that were mentioned today. And we bring all of these, O oh Lord, at your throne, Father. Knowing, O oh Lord, we can come to you and plead our request. And we plead, O oh Lord, for your will, your perfect will in all of these. We especially bring Linda's neighbor, O oh Lord, as they are trying to sell the house. Whatever the situation is, O oh Lord, I pray that you give wisdom to the person selling the house as well as the neighbor, that they will remain strong and, O oh Lord, use this, O oh Lord, as a way that they will know you and trust you. And I also pray, O oh Lord, for the neighbors pastor mentioned. I pray that this will be a time that they will hear about our Lord and Savior. They will hear about the way of salvation. They will come to know you. And we pray, O oh Lord, that give us the zeal to be a witness to all our neighbors and to be useful in the kingdom. We pray this in the holy and precious name of our Savior and Lord. For our last hymn, let's turn to hymn number 537, Jesus Saves. This song is beautifully written, a wonderful hymn, expresses the joy and energy and encourages us to reach souls for Jesus Christ. Let's stand as we sing hymn number 537.
Please be seated. Well, it's so good to have the Whites with us uh, back home from furlough from Chile. And uh, we had a good lunch together this afternoon and just enjoyed catching up and talking about uh, what the Lord is doing in their ministry. Uh, they're on church plant number two. You know, uh, missions is different from American church planting. Typically, missionary goes, he plants a church, trains up nationals, turns it over, and then leaves and goes and plants another church. You don't see that really in the United States. Uh, but it, it is something that, that they do, and it just crossed my mind how difficult it must be to work so hard and get a church established and get it, and then turn it over to somebody else and say, here, you do what the Lord leads you to do, and we're going to go start again from scratch. That is so difficult. But that's what our missionaries do. And so he, they're on church plant number two, and uh, probably in some time in the future, church plant number three, as the Lord leads. But they're going to come now. David is going to come and present, represent his ministry to us, talk about what the Lord's doing in their work. Thank you, Pastor. It is very good to be here again. And uh, I, we were talking earlier, I think it's been about eight, maybe nine years since we've been here and uh, a, lot, a lot of new faces here. And, and we have a lot of new faces in our family too. Uh, we, I think we were here, had maybe two or three, three kids when we started. Uh, we were probably here last time. Now we have a whole hassle. And so, uh, it's, but yeah, it's, it's uh, so great to be back. I want to say thank you for your faithfulness to us as missionaries over these past eight, nine years as well. Uh, we couldn't do it without you. We're part of your church. We're part of your ministry. And y'all and are part of our ministry as well. And we appreciate that uh, and, and, and everything that you have done uh, in being faithful and supporting us, supporting the ministry that we could do what we are doing over there. Um, and uh, like I said, we couldn't do it without y'all being behind us. We really appreciate that. Um, we, we're going to do a video and it's just, just going to show, show the pictures. I'm just going to sort of talk while the pictures are running because we don't have the audio on the video. Um, but you can go ahead and start it going. That'd be fine. Uh, but but uh, as when we left here, we went to Chile, South America. Obviously, we started off in Santiago. Santiago is a city of 7 million people there in the city. So that was a big adjustment. We, we came from Wake Forest, North Carolina. Uh, going, going to 7 million people was a big adjustment for our family. But, it, but we enjoyed it. We had the opportunity to work with Jason Kinney and this, uh, and. Uh, uh, Iglesia Bautista uh, Esperanza Hope Baptist Church there and while we were learning the language for the first year. During that first year, we also were able to start a Bible study. Jason already had the burden to start another ministry. And so as a team, we started another Bible study uh, in a different community. And as a result, at the end of our training uh, for language, I say the end, I don't think you're ever finished with a language training, but I still still feel like I'm uh, learning language every day. But at, at the end of that year, we switched over and went full time into the church plant in, in a uh, Iglesia Bautista Trinidad, Trinity Baptist Church. And there we worked with uh, Camilo. I mean, Camilo is a young man that came from Jason's church, uh, called to the ministry and was in seminary. So we worked full time there for four years. Uh, four years uh, within that church plant from the ground up and it was great to see how God uh, worked and, and all these lives these pictures right here are from that church these every uh, picture here is a result of your mission ministry uh, every picture of these people are a result of your giving and so it's, it's uh, great to see how God can work and, and plans that we don't even know we don't even realize and then we got to uh, uh, and we can get there and, and see how guys, we, um, as, a, as a team of missionaries, we were able to buy this building behind us and uh, for a seminary. And so in that seminary, they were training about uh, 30 to 40 uh, uh, people every year right now at this time are being trained full-time and part-time uh, in, in that to go out and start churches there in Chile. And, and we have some that are going out throughout the countries as well. So it's great to be part of that blessing and, and to see that. This right here is, uh, is Chile Way. This is the island that, um, in the southern part of Chile that we went to. Uh, after four years, five years of being in Santiago, we knew that God was calling us to the south, and we always had a burden for the southern in the southern part of Chile. Uh, there's a, obviously a great need in Santiago with a great mission emphasis there because of all the people, but there in the southern region, there's not a lot of uh, good Bible preaching uh, churches at all. And so... And God had always uh, had, a, we always had a burden for that. And through circumstances, uh, we were able to uh, meet somebody that lived here on this island and they 
or just talking about the need and how, how difficult the island was. And so uh, we went down and, and to view it, and then within a few uh, within a few months, this is our house that we bought, uh, and, and we're able to uh, uh, fix it up just so you can uh, know a little bit how that's how the, the started. It's, it's gotten better since then, so don't 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 go worrying about us too much right now. But we we uh, were stuck there for a couple, for a couple months. But uh, so that's. That's a typical house that uh, we sort of changed a little bit, so it's not quite typical anymore. But uh, but it, but it fits our family. It's hard to find a house for for nine people there in that area, and so uh, we had to make a house for nine people. And so, but God is able to to do it. I, mean, I can look back, and I was a contractor here in, in, in Wake Forest, and we look back and see how the how God was preparing us for the ministry, not only in Santiago, but in additions and construction in the buildings but also in our personal life as well and doing construction and everything uh, with the church ministry that we have now. And so at, uh, this uh, is a, a ministry we have. This is um, two, the guy, the first, first two guys were uh, people from our church that came down to help us, uh, people from Noose that came down to help us for a couple months and, and, and it was a blessing to see them. My daughter, Savannah, and one of our young men playing the guitar. But God, uh, in this past uh, April, we celebrated one year there at church, church in, uh, in Chilliway. Uh, the island of Chilliway is about the size of Rhode Island as far as geography. So it's not a small island. It's a big island. We had about 150,000 people there in the islands and about 50,000 in our city. Uh, and so we have a, a lot of potential, a lot of potential there to reach uh, different cities. Uh, three major cities of about three to thirty to forty thousand people, fifty thousand, and then a lot of surrounding islands there as well. Um, this was in March where we baptized uh, the week before COVID hit, and so we had to uh, we had our baptism, we had our organization uh, of the church, and then we had to shut down for COVID, uh, and have done, been doing everything online since then, unfortunately. But but God is blessing, and and everybody you see in those pictures are still doing it every day, every every week with us in uh, and Sunday, we have a Thursday night online. We have a Saturday morning online, Sunday morning, Sunday school. And, and then we have Facebook this morning as we were here. We, uh, we were streaming that. So uh, we're staying busy. And so it's great to see how God has uh, changed lives. The, the guy that was being baptized, the big guy, um, uh, he and his family got baptized. Uh, pray for him. His name is Sergio. Uh, has a, he, since we came back, he was diagnosed with a brain aneurysm, but they can't do anything with him on the island because of our, our hospital is not capable of handling, uh, but they won't send him to the mainland. It's, it's public health care, um, but they won't send him to the mainland because of COVID and, and our islands have been restricted and, and the, just a, it's a mess. So uh, he's really um, not doing well, but just pray for him and his family, five kids and, and, and just a very, he came, he and his family came. Just like every, just about every person that, that you'll see in these videos came from either a background or, or not knowing Christ or a background of a church that really wasn't teaching biblical doctrine. And so he was in a prosperity uh, type, type uh, situation with a prosperity gospel and, and, and everything and really just got out of church because he knew he wasn't, wasn't right and there wasn't any other options. And so um, he drove by our church one time and saw that he was working for Uber and saw the sign and was like, I need to come back here and check it. So he and his son came one, one uh, I think it was about a year ago, uh, September, October of 2019. And then they started coming back with their family really faithfully, started doing discipleship and all his family have really uh, grown and, and just you just see the, the change in their family. And he's te he texts me and tells me every time I see him, I just thank you for what you're doing for our family. And it's just because of the gospel is doing for their family, not, not me, but what the gospel is doing in their family. We also, at the beginning of this year, started a Christian school. Um, he had a really burden for, burden for his, his son, or actually all of his children. Um, and, and just where they're not, or being taught and not being taught in, 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 in this uh, public situation. And so we, we were able to pray about it. Um, I told him, I was like, I really don't want to start a Christian school, but I'll pray for you for two weeks about it. And, uh, and so we felt that after the two weeks, they really got to direct us in that pass. And so, uh, so we started this year for a, a few months and then we had to shut down as well for COVID. Uh, for that. So we're going to be re rebooting when we get back. We're here. We just got back here in July, uh, 1st of July some, sometime. Uh, we're going back January 5th as long as everything opens back up. So just pray for us uh, during this time as we are coming in here and uh, 
the, trying to report to our churches, our, our intentions were to raise some little bit more support that we needed. Uh, but because everything we're focused on on, on our supporting churches and just so we can get back and, and establish the connection, pray for us in that. And as we travel and, and safety and our children, we have two of our ch children here. I know uh, you probably know we're a little bit down in numbers uh, because <laughs> with us, but uh, they're, they're, my grand my my parents have some, her parents have some, and and her sister has. Another one, so they're 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 being taken care of. We didn't leave anywhere, but but uh, but they're they're enjoying time with the family this weekend. But just pray for us as we as we uh, and they're in the ministry. And like I said, uh, everything you see here is, is a result of your missions. Uh, they're in the island. Uh, you can you notice the people. They aren't like natives. They aren't living in huts. They aren't. Uh, but you would be surprised at the amount of witchcraft that goes on in our island. It, it, it's, it's our island. The island in Chile is very difficult island for the gospel very difficult island for for to evangelize in. uh the people are nice but they're very not very receptive and so we knew that going into the into it and um whereas in santi in santiago the church, first church plan we are looking at a four to five year plan uh we're looking at eight to ten years as far as in my eyes and we'll see what god does uh outside of what his plans are but uh to get a to get a church plan and a church started uh, we we God's blessed us with a great foundation. Uh, we have we have some really good families that have come alongside us, and so we're excited about that. And we're excited to see what God's going to do in the near future uh, with these families and and, and there in, 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 in the island. So uh, just just pray for us as we as we go back. Uh, like I said, our our island has a really a different mentality than most of all of, Ch uh, of all of Chile. Um, they're they're very self self sufficient um and, and want to be that way too and so uh they are a little bit hesitant to even accept outside chileans that come to the island more more so even uh um us as foreigners but god has a purpose god has a plan and god can do anything and so he can do anything through the gospel and that's what our job is to go around to, to the world and teach to teach and preach the gospel and train people uh and as matthew says go go and teach and preach and, and baptize and make disciples uh, and that's what that's what our job is. That's what we're doing. And uh, and I just want to say thank you once again for your part in that ministry and for for uh, for what you have done for us. And I'd love to. Uh, we have some prayer cards in the back. If you can pass by and, and get one of those, and you can uh, pray for us, remember us, and keep your, our family in your prayers. And we appreciate it uh, so much on on on, on our end uh, when you. are Praying and thank you for uh, thinking about us. It was good. I think it was in the first week of May. I think we were. I was with you in a Zoom, a Wednesday night Zoom. I think it was, and it was good to connect and see different people. And I remember, I remember you because you had the longest prayer request of everybody. But uh, no, <laughs> but, uh, but, but I mean, we had a great, we had a great time, and I I enjoy I enjoyed the time together. Uh, getting getting to see and get to uh, take part. It is, it's interesting to see how. Uh, in, in spite of everything with COVID and, and uh, different situations, how different churches in, in our congregation as well, we're able to do, reach a lot more people than we were originally, uh, just because we're doing everything online. And we have people, we have unsaved people from Santiago, their family members that join us every week uh, for for Sunday school, and, and they listen to to the gospel every week, whereas they weren't doing it before. I mean, and, and they're an island as well, so it's it's not only a disadvantage, but it's also a huge advantage. That, that God has given to us and put in, in a situation that we are, but we also can trust in him that he has a plan and everything, and, and we can continue on uh, doing the work that God has called us to do. We had already planned on this furlough back in January, had our had our uh, flights purchased and everything uh, before all this hit, and then, of course, everything came in and was a little bit up in the air, and our flights got canceled and rescheduled and canceled and all that, but uh, uh, thankful that we were able to get back and see, see, see our churches and see, see our family. And uh, take take a little bit of time with them, and uh, but also just uh, uh, get prepared for the next step in the, in the next uh, few years uh, of what the ministry is going to bring to us there in the island. Okay. If you have any questions, I'd love to talk to you afterwards. I can talk to my wife or Mike. Mike, uh, you can talk to Gabriel. He might tell you yes or no. He won't get much out of that past that. But but uh, but we we love to answer any questions for you here uh, afterwards as well. So you want me to go ahead and preach right now? Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I, 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 <laughs> but, um, uh, if turn, turn in your book, uh, Bibles in Romans, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. And we are going to look at the couple of verses there and, and, and 
obviously Romans is a book written, a pastor was preaching out of uh, Corinthians this morning with, with uh, Pablo, Pablo um, not Pablo, in English. Paul, Paul, uh, preaching about Paul this morning uh, with with the what the and we're going to touch his life again this this evening as well. And in the book of Romans, Paul is obviously writing to the church of Rome, uh, the church of Rome there not being an actual congregation like we are, but more home churches and scattered throughout Rome, uh, different different small groups. Uh, I guess I guess you want to say. And so the letter was written and sent with a lady that was going to Rome. And then as and passed around for, for, for instruction, but also that, that Paul was teaching them and their relationship, their church's relationship towards sin and the people in sin towards God, sin and God, but also the uh, people's relationship with, their, with God and the Christian as well, and how they should live and how they should not live. Now, as he introdu introduces this book in Romans, he starts off with several found founding points that he wants to get across before he even starts into the into the doctrinal part, I guess you want to say, of Romans. And let's read down, and we're going to start in Romans chapter 1 and verses 14 and read down to verse 17. It says, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you, that are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And we, and we look at that and say, wow, that sounds so nice. <laughs> the just shall live by faith. But what does it really mean in our life? What does it really mean? What's Paul saying in these first few verses? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity to come to College Park Baptist once more. And just thank you for the time to reconnect with uh, Pastor Matt and, and the family. Just thank you for uh, the, the church family here and for their faithfulness to us. And help us this evening that we can uh, glean from this couple of verses here as we uh, move along. And just pray to you just help me as I can speak clearly and also to uh, speak what you have us to, 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 to hear. But always so you can go and be a changed person as we leave. And just thank you for your blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In the first verse, it says, Paul, Paul, Paul says, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the to the Greeks and to the barbarians. We're looking at, the, the, at Paul's perspective of his life. And Pastor mentioned a lot of it this morning, how he thought about life and what his goal in life was not this life, but what, it was come, what his, his future relationship with his Christ. And so and he's saying, and in the, in the, in the, I'm, I'm, I'm a debtor. I'm a debtor because of what? Because of the love of Christ. The love of Christ that God has shown to me and not, not, I'm not a debtor because of the bank. I'm not a debtor because of the, of the house I own or the car I own or the, or the bank that, I, or, 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 or because of the bank or for, for my boat that was outside. I'm a debtor because of Christ's love. I, a couple of weeks ago, we were up in Tennessee at our, at our mission board, and we had the opportunity to go to uh, Bass Pro Shop. And, and, and I just, we walked in there, we just gotten back in, and, and it was like, wow. And you think about it, you think about all the stuff that I should calculate in the boat and the and the truck I need to pull the boat and then it's like man I, I could definitely be a debtor to the bank here but uh, but that's not what Paul's saying he's saying I'm a bit debtor to Christ I'm a debtor debtor because of Christ's love I'm a debtor to others I'm a debtor to the people because of the debt that Christ has paid for me and he he, he Christ has paid his debt in full for his sins. He's paid his debt with his life. He's paid his debt with his death. He's paid his debt with Christ's resurrection. And, and, and now Paul is saying, I'm going to give my life back to him. And I, 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 God has taken my sinful life. He's cleaned it all. He's, he, he's given me a new life. The, the name of our church here in, in Pastor was Iglesia Bautista uh, Vida Nueva. Um, New Life Baptist Church, and, and and I love that phrase because we're not the same person that we once were. We have a new life. We've been changed. And Paul's saying that, that my life is not the same. My account is now paid in full, and now I am a new person. I have a new beginning. I have a new life. And 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 it's for the love of Christ that's in me. It's for the love of Christ that I want to go and I want to reach these people. It's for the love of Christ that not only does he want, but he has a desire. He has a, he has a debt. He has a need uh, that he has to go. And, and, and to, to distribute the good news 
around the world. And in 2 Corinthians 5, verses 14 and 15 says, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we are all dead. And that he died for all, and that he should, which should live, should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. And so, so it's saying that for the love of Christ constrained us, and because of that, we're not living for ourselves, it says, but we're living for the one that paid our debt. We're living for the one which died and rose again, he says. And it, 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 he's saying, I have a debt to go to the world with that. I have a debt to go to Rome. I have a debt to go to the Jews. And I, it doesn't depend on their nationality. It doesn't depend if they're Chilean. It doesn't depend if they're American, Haitians, uh, Peruvians, uh, Africans, Venezuelans. Um, I just got reminded about something. I'm going, to take, I'm going to pause right there and give you one interesting uh, fact about the uh, church there in, in, in Santiago, uh, the first church ministry we got. About two years into that church plant, uh, we there was a huge influx in, in Chile of the Haitian immigrations coming uh, immigrants coming into Chile. Uh, Chile had opened the doors for Haitians to come as a relief effort, and I'm um, just thousands and thousands and thousands of Haitians uh, have made their way into into Chile. There in our in our, na our community of Itacura, we had about 150, 130, 40,000 people in that community, but it, the population just exploded of Haitians. And so we had about two or three coming to our church uh, just because of the custom of the, of the Haitians was to go to the church. It wasn't necessarily because they, were, they agreed with the church doctrine or anything else, but they, they out of custom. They get dressed up, they go to church on Sunday morning. So we had a few of those that would come every Sunday, and they were really faithful. Uh, a few, a few, few uh, months, about a year into that, uh, it's got to pray, and it's like, God, really, we need to start something for these Haitians that are coming because they didn't know Spanish. They speak Creole and, and, and French, but they didn't know Spanish, and so they were coming to our church not not really understanding anything, but eventually they would learn Spanish and, and get to get a little bit of, of, of uh, Bible. And so about two years into that, we, we said, uh, we're going to start in May. We're going to start a, a Haitian uh, church service. And if it didn't last, I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to start doing it. And about two weeks before that, a new Haitian arrived, and uh, uh, Christian was his name, and he spoke perfect, perfect Spanish, and he spoke uh, perfect um, Creole, of course. And so he was our interpreter, still is our interpreter there for, for, for the Haitian church that's going on now. So we were able to start that ministry and, and, and see that ministry grow. Uh, at the end of that year, and, and we had a celebration, and one of our Chileans came to us, came to us afterwards, and 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 said, Pastor, I, I'm glad you started the Haitian church, but I really didn't want to. I'm like, well, really, because this is one of our main men in our church uh, that that was there, and he's like, yeah, you know what? Before a year ago, I was a racist. I didn't like them because they were from Haiti. I didn't want to be around them. He's like, but I see how God has has changed me, and God is working them, and they're the same people as we are. And it was so great to see that as God continued to grow that ministry. And when we left that ministry, we had about had about 70 in, in the Chilean church and about 40 to 50 in the, in the Haitian church. And, and, and it was just a great ministry to see that, that I never dreamed I was going to Chile to start a Haitian, Haitian ministry. But, but God, God knew all that long. And he, he opened the doors. He planned it and everything. It's just great to see how those people are still continue on in the ministry and there's some young guys that are in there that are doing an awesome job of of, of, of tra training and just, just leading that church and so it's great to see that as a um as, as a as a result i get back to my point but the, the, the paul says it doesn't depend on their nationality it doesn't depend on their color of their skin it doesn't depend on he says it doesn't depend on their education it doesn't mean it doesn't matter in these verses it says it doesn't matter if they are wise or the unwise if they're smarter or, or if they're just backwoods it doesn't matter because they have a need and I have a debt. And, and, and it doesn't matter on their economic situation, but, but, but it is offered to everybody. And it, it, we, we think about the COVID situation right now in our, in our church in, in Castro. We have a, a, one lady that's a pharmacist, another lady that's a doctor. And, and if, let's, just for, for, let's just say that they came up with a cure for the COVID, which are almost, it sounds like they're almost trying to do. Uh, not these two ladies, but, but, but around the world. Uh, but it, let's just say if they had that cure and they said, I don't really want to give that. I just want to keep it for myself and see what happens with this COVID stuff. That, that would actually be a wrong, wouldn't it? 
It'd be a, uh, because with the, with the knowledge, with the, with the power, it becomes a responsibility, right? And so it would be uh, what we consider a sin for them not to give that, to give that um, cure to, to, to other people to save the world. And, and, and you, say, you think about that, but that's what Paul is saying right here. The gospel is like that. We have a cure for the world, a world that is dying of a plague. What kind of plague? A plague of sin. A plague of a, a broken relationship with a Christ. And, and we have that, and they're, they're going to hell. But what are we doing to get it around? What are we doing to spread the cure around? What are to, 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 uh, some, some are going to hell, having heard the gospel and rejecting it. Others are going to hell, never having heard the gospel, but still rejecting it. We, we, uh, the, this morning I was uh, preaching uh, on, on, uh, for our church there on, in, in, on down in Romans how God's revealed himself to everyone. And we, everyone is responsible. Some of us have, have had time and time again we've had the gospel explained to us. Others, they have the gospel only from what they see outside. Only from what they might have heard through the word or through, through different areas. They never have heard the clear gospel, clear presentation. And you think about that, while some have rejected, others have never heard, and we still have the cure. We still have the cure. And, and as Christians, we have the truth, we have the cure, and we also have what? The responsibility. We have the responsibility that comes with that to go to the world with the gospel. And you look at Paul, and he says, I am a debtor because of what? Because of Christ and what he's done for me. I'm a debtor because of what I am. I'm a debtor to all men. He says to, uh, to the Jews and to the Romans. If you think about the culture of this time, the Jews, had, had, uh, uh, they, and they were, they were two types of people in their mind. They were Jewish people and they were pagans. You think about the church that he's writing to. The church that he is writing to is in Rome. In the Roman culture, there's two different types of people, the Romans and the barbarians. And so the two cultures did not, did not go together. But he says, you know, it really doesn't matter because we're in the same situation. We got to, the, the, in the mind of God, there are two types of people. There's the saved and the unsaved. And, and, and it's not from this country or another country. It's not from this color or another color. It's not from because I'm intelligent or dumb. No, it's because I'm saved or I'm lost. And that's what the Christ is saying. And in 1 John 5, 12, it says, He that has the Son has life, and he that has not the Son of God has not what? Life. We have a cure. We have a debt because we have a responsibility. We have a debt because of Christ who gave it to us and what he's done for us and that we can repay the not only that, he doesn't say, he just says, I'm a debt, but what does he say? Keep on going down, verse 15. So, as much as an enemy, he says, he says, I'm ready. I have a debt. Number two, I have, I'm ready. As much as within me, with all of my heart, he's saying, I'm ready to lay aside whatever I need to so I can purpose. You got to get this purpose accomplished. I don't, it doesn't matter what, 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 it might cost me. It doesn't matter if it costs me my life. It doesn't matter if it costs me my, my, my house, my goods, my whatever. I'm ready, Paul is saying. In 1 Corinthians 2, 2 4, and 5, it says, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit of the power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the what? In the power of God. It wasn't because Paul was talented. Sometimes I think of Paul, and I think of how he's a religious man, but he really does not say that he's a talented preacher at all. He said, it wasn't really because I was a really good preacher that they were going to listen to me. It's because of the power of God. I go in the, and I think about that, and, and, and especially there in, in, in Castro, in, in, Chilo, in the island of Chile. Like, it's not because of what David White can do for this community. They, they look at me and see a gringo. They look at me and say, ah, what's, he, doesn't know how to, he doesn't know how to share sheep, and he doesn't know how to, how to plant potatoes. He's not any good. But you know what? I don't care. It's because of the power of the gospel that's going to be reached these people. It's my relationship that I have with those people. And, 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 and Romans 12, verses 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present what? Your bodies. A what? Living sacrifice. Holy is the one to God, which is your what? Reasonable service. That's the least we can do. It's, a, it's the minimal we can do. And, and, and Paul's there. And Paul's not saying, I'm not going to do something that's unreasonable. I'm going to do something that's expected of the Christian because I'm a debtor 
and I'm ready to do what God wants me to do. And as a Christian, that's our responsibility. That's, 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 what, that's our reasonable service, they're saying. And he was ready to be used. Not only that, in verse 16, it says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He's a debtor. He's ready, but he's not ashamed. We think about it how, how in, our, in our situations in our life and in and, and, and different areas and how difficult sometimes it can be to present, to present the gospel. It, it, but it's, it, yes, it's difficult. I, it, it's difficult for me every time. And I, 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 I think often, it's like, I was joking with my kids this morning, or, or yesterday, uh, our youngest daughter, she's not, or not the youngest, I guess she's one, two, three. Uh, anyway, she's one of, the, one of our daughters. Uh, she, 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 lost, she lost her tooth yesterday. She was at my brother's house, and she lost her tooth. We weren't there. And she went to the, to the, to the, to the sink and washing out, and she passed out, hit the concrete floor, or the tile floor in the back of her head. And, and uh, we took her to get checked out, and I think she's fine, but she thinks she might have a slight concussion. Uh, so we were joking around, and, and she's like, Dad, have you ever fainted? I'm like, yeah. I used to I fainted about three or four times as, as a kid and as a teenager because I hated speaking in front of people. That's the only time I've, 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 ever, I've, I've ever spoken is when I was speaking in front of people or singing in front of people. And then God had to work in my life to change that. And, 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 but God is, and, and, and says, but well, I am not ashamed because I have the power of the gospel of Christ. And then I have the power. It's not my power, Paul's saying but God's power. He can work in you. He can change you. He can do what he needs to do in your life to make you and do what you need to do. And Psalms uh, 25 verses 20 says, let me not be ashamed for I put my trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. We have what the world needs. We have the cure. We have what they want. They, we have their, their need, but we can't be ashamed and give it to them. We can't be ashamed of what, for what Christ has done for us. And Paul is saying, and, and, and from here in Israel, and if you think about that, Paul is, Paul is there in Israel writing to the Romans. Who are the Romans? The Romans are the ones that were controlling the Jews at this time. Paul's writing, and, and, and he's saying, you're, you're, you're teaching and preaching. We're preaching of a Jewish Messiah, a Jewish Savior has come. Who, who, what happens? The Romans crucified them. The Romans were in charge. But he, Paul is saying, you know what, even though Christ was a Jew and you're in Rome, don't be ashamed that your king is a Jew, that your savior is a Jew. Don't be ashamed of what, 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 what Christ has done for you. It doesn't matter about what, what the situation, the political situation or the economic situation or whatever. It's cultural situation. Because you know what? We have a debt. We have a debt. And we, and Paul's saying, I want to come to Rome to teach you. I want to come to Rome to preach. I want to, with, with confidence, without shame. He's saying, let's go. And he's looking for, for God's help. And we need to do that as Christians. We need to pray that we have the opportunity, the power, the desire to work, to do what God has called us to do. You say, I don't, I don't really have that ability. Yes, you do. You may not have the ability, but we have the power of God. May not have the ability, but we have the responsibility. May not have the ability, but we have the debt. And we have a God that can change us. We have a God that can work through, through us. But we have to be willing and we have to be able. And you think think of what Christ has done for us and all that he has done for us in our life and salvation through his death and through keeping us in here in this in this in, in, in this area or whatever phase of life you may be. What are you doing for Christ? Paul says, I'm a debtor. The least I can do is go tell the world about Jesus. The least I can do is go tell the world about what Christ has done for me. And we need to do that as well. Here, here in Cary, around the world. We need missionaries all over. If God calls you to be a missionary, uh, that would be exciting. If God calls you to be a Sunday school teacher, that would be exciting. If God calls you to talk to your neighbor next door, that would be exciting. Because you know what? That's our responsibility. We have a debt to do it. Lord, I thank you for this time. I thank you for the few minutes you've given to us here. Help us to take our responsibility to heart. Help us to take it seriously and realize that there's so much you've given to us and the least we can do is spread it to other people and that we may see what the life-changing transformation has been 
and not only in our life, not only in our family, but also in the family of, in the lives of others. Thank you for your love in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for that reminder. I was, I was thinking that we, so many Christians were concerned because uh, when COVID hit, we had to close down church, do everything virtually. But you know what really took a hit in our country? The spread of the gospel. Um, so uh, few people were able to even share their faith with somebody else. But what was surprising to me is that didn't even cross my mind until the middle of April. I went a whole month not even thinking, hey, I can't share my faith with people because nobody's going to stop and talk to you on the street anymore. That's just never going to happen during, during the COVID time, especially back in March. But wh why not even think about it? Um, how sad is that, right? I mean, that's a that's shame on my part that it wasn't crossing my mind. But then so many blog articles about should churches be open or not? How about a blog article on should people be sharing their faith or not? And the fact that that's not happening, great reminder that we have a debt to share the gospel with people. It is the power of God unto salvation. And I just encourage you to really reflect on that uh, tonight as you go home. Maybe you have a neighbor, maybe you have a coworker who you can take the gospel to and, and tell them about the Lord and just make all the difference in the world uh, to that person. Let's close in prayer. Father, thank you for this missionary presentation. Thank you for the whites and, uh, and just the ministry they've had to us today, reminding us of the needs in Chile and, and how you are working through them to bring people to faith. I pray that you'd encourage them and uh, provide for their needs as you will. And just bless their ministry, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Good